Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can apply formatting to a shape, you need to click it to select it. If selecting a text box or word art as a shape, ensure that you click on its border so that the border appears as a solid, not dashed, line. This indicates that the whole shape has been selected. Once the shape has been selected, you will then see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected shape. At the left end of the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon is the Insert Shapes button group. The large scroll box within this button group contains the shapes that you can insert, and it functions in the exact same way that the Shapes button on the Insert tab of the ribbon does. To the right of that are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape button and the Draw Text Box button. For shapes that are drawn by hand, such as the Scribble shape, for example, you can click the Edit Shape button and then select the Edit Points command from the drop-down menu that displays to show the editing points of the selected shape. You can then click and drag the editing points that are shown in order to change the contours of the selected shape. You can click the Draw Text Box button to draw a text box in your document. This button functions the same way that the Draw Text Box button that you can select from the Text Box button on the Insert tab in the ribbon does. In the Shape Styles button group, you can make stylistic changes to a selected shape that change the appearance of the fill and line of a selected shape. You can scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box of preset shape appearances and then click on the one that you would like to apply to your shape if desired. You can also use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to customize the appearance of a selected shape. You can use the Shape Fill drop-down button to fill the inside of a selected shape with one of the many colors, pictures, gradients, or textures available. Note that this button is unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable area, such as lines or arrows. To select a fill color, click on one of the color choices shown in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Fill Colors command in order to open the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you want. You can either click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or you can click the Custom tab and then select the color you want from the Rainbow Gradient. At the bottom of both tabs, you can use the Transparency slider to set the level of color transparency. If you opened the color dialog box, click the OK button once you've made a choice to apply the selected color. Note that if you did apply a fill effect to a shape and then wanted to remove it, you can choose the No Fill command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu in order to remove any fill effect. You can also insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect. To do this, you would choose the Picture command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu of choices in order to open the Select Picture dialog box. Here you can navigate to and then select the picture that you want to use as the fill effect for the selected shape. You can select a gradient to apply to the selected shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the Gradient command in the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu and then clicking on the preset gradient that you would like to apply to the shape. If you want to add a texture to a shape, then instead choose the Texture command from the Shape Fill button's drop-down menu and then click on the texture you want to apply from the choices shown in the side menu. Back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you'll also find the Shape Outline drop-down button. The choices that you make here affect the appearance of the lines in the shape. This is also the button that you can use to alter the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as the line shape or the arrow shape. If you click the Shape Outline button, you can select a color shown in the color palette of choices to change the line color of your selected shape. To remove a line color, choose the No Outline choice from the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu. To change the width of the shape's outline, make a selection from the side menu of choices that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Weight command in the Shape Outline button's drop-down menu. Likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the dashes command. If you are formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, you can change the end points on the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the arrows command in the shape outline buttons drop-down menu. 
Back in the Shape Styles button group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you will also see the Shape Effects button. You can click this button to view a drop-down listing of the various preset effects grouped by category that you can apply to the selected shape. Simply roll over the desired category within the drop-down menu, and then click on the desired category setting in the side menu that appears. If you have Word Art or a text box selected, you can apply the style settings shown in the Word Art Styles button group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon. You can select a desired Word Art style from the listing shown in the scroll box within this group. You can click the Text Fill drop-down button to select a fill effect for the text within the text box or Word Art from the drop-down menu. The choices displayed here are the exact same color choices you have when you click the Shape Fill button in the Shape Styles group. You can click the Text Outline drop-down button to select an outline effect for the text within the selected text box or word art from the drop-down menu. The choices displayed here are the exact same choices you have when you click the Shape Outline button in the Shape Styles group. You can click the Text Effects drop-down button to select a special effect for the text within a selected text box or word art from the drop-down menu. The choices displayed here are the exact same choices you have when you click the Shape Effects button in the Shape Styles group. You can click the Text Direction drop-down button to select a direction for the text to flow within selected word art or a text box from the drop-down menu that appears. You can click the Align Text drop-down button to select a side of the word art or text box to which you want to align the text. You can use the Create Link button to create a link between the text contained in two text boxes. To use this feature, you must have at least two text boxes within your document, and the text box that will catch the overflow text from the first text box must be empty. You then select the first text box, and then click the Create Link button. Your mouse pointer will appear as a picture when you hold it over the document. You then click on the empty or blank text box that will display any overflow text from the first text box. You can then type your text into the first text box, and when it can no longer display the text, the overflow text will then appear within the linked text box as a continuation. This allows you to create multi-column text box articles with a customizable layout in your Word document. Note that if you click the Create Link button and then change your mind, you can click the Escape key on your keyboard to cancel the linking before creating it. The buttons that are shown in the Arrange button group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon display the same options available when formatting pictures. In the Arrange button group, you'll find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of a selected shape. You can click the Position button to select a preset placement option for a selected shape. You can click the Text Wrapping drop-down button to select a preset text wrapping option for a selected shape. If you have overlapping shapes in your document, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons to change the order in which the shapes overlap each other within the stack. You can click the Selection Pane button to show and hide the selection pane in Word. This pane shows the selectable objects within a document. You can click the Align button to choose from one of the available alignment options. The Group button is used if you have multiple shapes simultaneously selected in your document. In this case, you can click the Group button and then choose the Group command from the drop-down menu to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. Note that you can also take a shape that has been grouped together and then click the Group drop-down button and choose the Ungroup command from the drop-down menu of choices to break the shapes back into their separate components. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected shape in your document. You can use the Size button group to resize a selected shape. You can use the spin arrows at the right end of the Shape Height or shape width text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of a selected shape. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.